the No Fate channel checking in and today we are doing a review of Legoland Boston. Legoland Boston. First and foremost, it's not in Boston. It is 10 minutes north of Boston in Somerville, Massachusetts. This is a good thing for two reasons. If you've ever tried to park in Boston, you know it is a pain and it's expensive. The location in Somerville that this Legoland is located has tons of parking, has parking garages, and most of it's free for the first three hours. If you stay over three hours, I think it was a dollar, and then two if you stay over four hours. So um, extremely affordable and easy to park. Also, the area of Somerville that it is in is completely re renovated. Um, it has tons of new restaurants and shopping centers. The sidewalks are ultra wide and it is definitely uh, consumer friendly. So let's talk about what's most important to parents and that is cost. What you do not want to do is go to Legoland and buy tickets at the door. That is the surefire way to pay the most amount of money for those tickets. We had anytime tickets. They were given to us as a gift. Shout out to my son's aunt and uncle. They're awesome. Um, but that allowed us to show up at any day and time uh, to get in. From looking online, there were a number of packages, um, but it did look like you could save a substantial amount of money, not only buying tickets in advance, but buying packages and or using a Groupon. You know you're at Legoland Boston when you see the huge giraffe and potentially the line of people outside. It does open at 10 a.m. and especially on the weekend, it can get quite busy. If you go on uh, google.com and search Legoland, you can actually see the peak times for the day that you're visiting. Um, to give you an idea of when you should or shouldn't go. We got there early at 9.55, which is what I recommend because once we got through the initial line to get in, the area itself was um, not packed at all. Let's go over all of the awesome things at Legoland. So you go in through the front door, you have them scan your pass, and you immediately go up to the second floor where all the activities are. You get an animated historical background of how the Legos were created as well as an overview of how the Legos are injected molded, but it's geared towards children. It's quite entertaining. You then do a fun little arcade activity um, where you build your own Legos and design their faces. Um, that was pretty impressive and interesting. You then move on to the first of two of their rides. Now, this was my favorite ride. It is called Kingdom Quest. You go along on a cart, you've got a laser gun, you shoot at things to get points. Very similar to the Buzz Lightyear ride at Disney. Moving over to Miniland, this was impressive to me because they had a number of local um, models of areas in Boston. The Prudential Center, Fenway Park, um, Logan Airport, a couple of others. And the room itself actually shifted from morning to noon to night in terms of the lights and very high attention level to detail. I thought that was great. Now, number 10 is Dupelo Farm. Now, my son, who's three and a half, spent the most of his time here. He loved it. They had a slide that he must have gone on 10 times. So this is probably an area for the younger children. Um, what else? The racetrack here, number five. This is the Lego build and test. You're able to build a race cart and then test it. Um, my son, was interested in that a little bit, but I thought it was really cool to be able to, to design race cars and test them on multiple tracks. Also, number six is the second ride, Merlin's Apprentice. I went on this ride. I thought it was fairly good. Um, it was a very shorter, smaller version of the Dumbo ride at Disney. You get on, you go up and down, you spin in a circle, and there are bicycle pedals where you, which you can pedal dur throughout the ride, and I believe they take you up and down as you pedal. Two activities that we didn't get to do that looked like a lot of fun was the play zone. This is a multi-level area where kids would go in without their shoes, run around, crawl, etc. And the 4D cinema um, also looked like a lot of fun. A few downsides with Legoland Boston. They do have a limited area. They use the area well, but overall it is small. If you go during peak times, it will be crowded. One, th Two things that I was really disappointed in was the cafe. The prices were high, which you would expect at any type of location like this, but the food choices were limited and the food that was there looked horrible. This section says on the map Lego Space Mission. It's actually Star Wars, uh, the Clone Wars um, mini land mock-up and it was pretty bad. The lighting was horrible. Even the mock-ups were pretty 
sad and limited. The package that we had came with this piece and one activity booklet. The activity booklet, if you bought it separate, was $5. Um, I thought it looked pretty interesting. They have supposedly top secret missions you can go through and fill out certain pieces of item of information. Um, I thought this would have been good for a child of maybe 6 to 10 ages. You're supposed to be able to go through and collect stamps. One of my biggest pet peeves about this was that it was not an actual ink stamp, nor was it a cutout stamp. It's actually an indentation stamp. So I thought that was a little bit cheesy. Overall, we had a good time. We spent nearly two hours there. My son, who's three and a half, was a little young for a number of the activities in terms of his interest level. I would definitely recommend this to anyone who has children that are into Legos. This is definitely a must see. If you have any questions about Legoland Boston, then leave a comment below. If you enjoyed today's video, then hit that subscribe button. Thanks for watching, and as usual, don't save anything for the trip back. The No Fake Channel is dedicated to providing you with ideas on how to improve your community. Your community at home, your community in your neighborhood, and your community in your town. I'll also be giving you insight into this dad's tricks, trips, and tribulations.